The production of this video was made possible by donors to the Orchestration Online Patreon Initiative. Please consider adding your support to the creation of free educational internet resources by visiting our Patreon page linked below. Hey there, this is your orchestration tutor, Thomas Goss. Get set, everybody, for another great collection of scores. This first one from Gemignano, and it's really delightful. Just some wonderful ideas here in terms of texture. And I also just really like the whole idea how the, the textures and, and the, uh, the scoring is really in the service of a particular conception of the meaning of the music. I feel that's really important. Now, having said that, there are some notational things that we should probably talk about. All right, so first one is this. Now, Gemignano, if you have not seen some of my previous evaluations, then, uh, then you will not have heard that I don't think that slurred staccato should slur over into a further articulation mark. I think that if you put the slur over a group of staccatos, you are saying mezzo staccato, right? So that really should just cover those notes. Because if you slur past the mezzo staccato, you are asking the players to do a diaphragmatic accent. In other words, they're going to be, um, the sound is going to be sort of like, uh, 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 uh. You know what I mean? They cannot articulate this accent with their tonguing, right? So if you cut the slur here and just make it go this far, you get uh, 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 Do you see what I'm saying? And it's the same thing here. You are slurring into a tenuto. Do not slur into or out of a tenuto. Tenutos should just be their own full notes, right? I mean, you can slur into a tenuto and get a full value of the note from there, but it's just sort of awkward. So it should be better, you know, uh, 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 right? That way you just get the nice tongued articulation, right? As opposed to here, there's kind of, it's just sort of meaningless to slur past mezzo staccato. Now here we have another problem in slurring over tenuto staccato, all right? So tenuto staccato should not have any kind of slur over it at all, right? Because you are you are abbreviating each one. It's like, it makes this makes a sound sort of like unga. Unga, 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 right? And if you don't, if you have a slur over that, you lose the whole idea of the separation between the notes, which, you know, it's full value, but staccato, right? So full value, but then for the length of what the staccato would be, so you need space in between each note. You do not need to slur over it, right? Okay, so don't slur tenuto staccato. It has a really specific meaning. Okay, now here you are slurring groups of tremoloed notes uh, with dashed slurs, and that's fine. I don't like this one though, okay? Here you don't slur this, and I think that's a good idea, right? So the the phrase is right in here. So you are really expressing phrases. So the idea of tying these and then going onward with the phrase is unnecessary because the um, the tremolo is just going to last anyways, right? So yeah, I mean, I, I just don't think you need to, I think you should, you should take one approach or the other. Either you should tie your tremolos and don't worry about 
phrasing or you should not have tied tremolos and then add phrasing one or the other okay but don't do both it's just weird okay uh, but I, but I still think it's permissible and it's fine all right okay so those were my questions about notation all right my my comments my thoughts about notation one last little comment and that is the um, the comma the pausa should happen for all of the instruments involved at the end of the bar don't put the pausa at the on the note put it right here okay so these are all fine this pausa mark should go right here all right okay <laughs> those are my comments uh, now some other general things is we we need to know which person is playing right so oboe one and two which oboist is playing the solo we you know maybe it should be the second oboe player same thing with horns which player is playing the solo who solo flute who one solo right so r mark the number one if you intend for the first player the principal player to solo okay <laughs> All right, so that's me picking apart the notation. Now let's talk about the scoring, which is really delightful. I mean, there's still some work that needs to be done on it, but it is really nice. I like the overlapping bassoons and clarinets. I feel that if you're just going to slur up to this E and then just let go of it immediately into the clarinets, it really kind of is no need for this higher note in the bassoon, right? I think you can just overlap going straight to the clarinet and not even have to have the top note right and then this overlap and that overlap is great that's a really really neat idea uh, the beautiful bustling trembling strings in the background are really nice however there's a lot of of fussy little um, dynamic markings as we're going here <clears throat> and there's a lot of mixing like I feel like you were mixing the sound set to to play more naturally um, as opposed to just marking very natural casual markings that are more global for instance like you're surging from pianissimo up to mezzo forte and then back and then you have this punch here from the horns but like the strings are really going to be hard just difficult to hear against so much projection in the winds and then this punch in the in the horns so <clears throat> what i would recommend is piano in your strings crescendo back and forth crescendo back and forth and keep this piano just put an accent mark over it okay so piano accent here these horns same thing piano staccato okay and then the bassoons and clarinets can uh can crescendo up from piano excuse me from pianissimo to piano and back all right don't overdo it don't have it swell so much right then your oboe can just be piano crescendo right solo and solo is all you need to say same thing here this can be piano crescendo solo and the players will know that they are meant to play out and then from here you should have your dynamics increase instead of having these surges going back and forth and back and forth have one longer surge going towards a goal right here a um, where all of your dynamics come together right and it shouldn't be soft in the strings you won't be able to hear these strings over the sound of the horns and the lower winds right so they should all be going up to mezzo forte horns going up to maybe a mezzo piano from pianissimo all right just try to get a better blend in here but otherwise you know the treatment of the melody the harmonic ideas in here they're all really nice um yeah i don't really have big criticisms to say about that all right uh one critique right in here is that that is really a long stretch of bars to be giving to the cellos under one bow, right? You want your bowing to be expressive and you want it to sort of, you know, I mean, it's okay to have the horns play this long stretch, your solo horn, 
But, you know, keeping in mind that there are other kinds of phrasing going on in your winds, and, uh, and that the bow stroke can only last so long on a cello. So what if it were up, down, down, up, down, up, down, so no slur at all, right? Or um, up, down, up, down, right? That would, that would also work great. Okay. Uh, and then I really do like the fact that you are showing where you're going in your dynamics down to pianissimo. You all, it should be marked all the way through for all of the instruments. And then the pausa, and then boom. Da, 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 da. Uh, da, 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 da. And here you've got your, here you've got that central line. Da, 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 da. Really needs to be emphasized more as this is the actual completion of the melody, not the, not this high A, written A. Now, bum, 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 bum. Yeah, so it's pizzicato, and, and I like the uh, the motion here, how it's rising, rather than just imitating the uh, the winds. And then this is really neat right in here. I just really love this little solo clarinet idea. Then you draw everything off. You've got rests here after the pizzicato, Okay, and you've got a diminuendo. There should be a diminuendo here and there, correct? And also here, because you're starting soft, right? Because right now you've got da, 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 da. Okay, the sound of the instruments here, these winds, is going to be pushing the, re the reverb, the, um, <clears throat> the overhanging sound of these, uh, of this very firm noise right in here, this chord, is going to wash over the beginning of this measure. And so the very delicate answer that you want to enunciate here will get uh, covered, right? You don't want that. So it's really important for you to, for this um, diminuendo to go in all instruments, right? So that by the time you get here, it's very light and crisp and you don't have to worry about the meaning getting buried by what happened before. Meaning is extremely important to you as an orchestrator. I can completely tell this, right? So this particular point, which I have pointed out in other scores, I really want people to understand that. If you have call and response phrases like this with a strong one followed by a very soft, delicate one, then you really have to make some space before you start your downbeat, okay? All right. Good lesson here. And then this is really nice, the um, imitation of the clarinet, what happened before. Then we've got bum, 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 bum. I really think this is fun. Cellos and uh, we've got horns, trumpets, and bassoons below. It is a very satisfying sound without using that many instruments. Little timpani roll at the end and then just finishing off with a little chorale in the lower winds and the strings. That is just really wonderful. You might want to have a further diminuendo here. You know, bum, 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 and then diminuendo, and then you're ready to start here. So there isn't a feeling of dropping off there, okay? So yeah, really fun score. Just really enjoyed this a lot. Um, a lot of cool ideas. I mean, there. I I think if I were your orchestration teacher directly, you know, we were working together on this, I would probably pick apart some of the harmony in a couple of these spots a little bit more. But generally, this is serviceable. If you just made a few tweaks to it, it would be ready for a reading. So great work. Uh, really enjoyed this score. And you know, obviously, you have you have perspectives about scoring that would be valuable to other people. So as you continue on, I really recommend that you, Gemignano, check out the rest of the scores in this video, watch them, and as you know, insights will occur to you as you watch the other participants. So please do add those comments below this video, or perhaps if this is posted on Facebook, please share, even if it's just a compliment. You know, if you don't feel qualified to critique or or give feedback or something like that. Even just like letting the other, the other entries, the other participants with their entries know 
that you appreciated their work. It's really, really important, and it really helps to kind of tie our community together. Um, and, you know, we're all on the same road here. We all want to improve and get better as orchestrators. Nobody has arrived yet, not even the best of us. And we all have things to learn and to share. So it would be great if, to hear more of those comments. So please do comment. And now for the next entry. This is a really great score, Filippo. I've really enjoyed looking at it, and I hope I've got some helpful comments for you. Just kind of looking at the scoring, just the, the technical aspects, you've pretty much covered most things. You know, there there isn't really a whole lot for me to... Um, to take issue with. So any little things that occur to me, I will comment on as we go in terms of, um, you know, something about notation that needs to be fixed. But generally speaking, this really is a model of doing it right, like starting, you know, marking the entrances with the correct instrument that's coming through and uh, letting us know I guess right here, this is third oboe and English horn, and there doesn't seem to be a change, so you really didn't need to mark third oboe. This could just be as you marked cor anglais. About the only thing I would take issue with is that there just really seems to be a lot of upsweep in the in the harp. So I think it's the middle one that needs to be cut. So like the first one is kind of fun. And then like another one at the end, but like it, it starts to become too regular, right? It, it, you start to notice it instead of the music, right? The effect instead of the music. So always make sure that the effects uh, m make us focus on the music more rather than calling attention to themselves, right? So if you repeat an effect, no matter how delightful, how much it inspires you, it feels really good inside to hear that effect still it will it will distract now if you're gonna just be marking the tuning at the beginning before the uh, before the glissando then you don't need to write everything out because this is the same exact thing right you the the settings of the pedal are the same exact thing as the notes written on the page now a lot of people like to write out these notes because it's sort of it looks really professional because we see this on professional scores but really the professional thing to do is just these days is just to mark the the uh, the starting note and the destination note the starting note just as a quarter note with a glissando line to the destination note and then just the pedal marking all right, everybody, that's that's all you need to do. You don't need to slave over making it look like an older piece of sheet music. Okay, so that was pretty much the only other thing. Uh, actually, hang on, and that is that you are not tremoloing between this note and the tie, right? So the slur should only slur to the note that is being tremoloed to, right? So it should be and then tie further. Don't put the slur mark going farther, right? Because it, it just sets up a confusing um, disconnect logically in the brain. So just slur across the two pitches that are going to be uh, tremoloing back and forth with each other and then have a further tie from there to whatever note that follows or whatever value that needs to be extended, okay? All right, now one last little detail here in these challenges, and I'm really hoping that you enter it again uh, and, and you know, for all the years that I have coming up in the future. The thing about it is that you don't need the piano line. I mean, I know how the piano part goes. I don't need it for reference. We can just get rid of it, right? And then, then the 
staff size can be much larger, right? And then it's easier for us all to read. And then I can demonstrate things to everybody watching better, right? So in your future, in your future entries, and I think I actually mentioned this in the guidelines, uh, get rid of the piano staff, okay? Just just cross that off. Just delete it from the score that you're going to send me, from the image you're going to send me, and then increase the staff size as big as you can go without too many collisions vertically. All right. All right. So now let's get back to the scoring. Starting with the treatment of the melody. Uh, first, you start off here with uh, English horn, ba da da dum, ba da de da dum, and then you have other, um, you have other instruments come in. And what I really like about this is that the voice of the oboe continues on, and then the other instruments build on it instead of dovetailing. Right. So it's it feels cumulative. Now you could have continued on. Da, da, bum, and then tied this C going onwards and then had the oboe go on ba, da, bum. and here you did that but then you continue on here with clarinets ba, ba, bum, bum, bum. all right so so there's a mixture of that approach some places here you know some places there and some places not <clears throat> anyhow but one way or another it's a nice take on it. I really do. I really did enjoy that. So that all works fine. Uh, let's talk about the accompaniment now. Just in terms of the overall dynamics here, you do not need to say mezzo forte on your solo line just to bring it out. Now, maybe you'd need to do that in order to bring it out where, with the, uh, the mock-up. But in real life, probably the best thing to do would be to score everything pianissimo, except for the harp, and then have the melody be piano espressivo with the hairpins and the crescendo, right? Then you get the best sound of all. Or you could you could mark the flutes up to piano just so that they don't get buried by the bassoons and clarinets. In fact, um, you know, it's, it's almost completely unnecessary to have this note in the flutes when it's being doubled by the that same note in the clarinets, it's just you know I you know the clarinets are a much sturdier, much more settled sound, and they will pretty much absorb what's going on on the flutes anyway, right? I mean, if everything is really soft, let's say that the clarinets are pianissimo and the flutes are piano, then you'll get a blended sound, all right? So I just think like rethinking the dynamics here is is very important, and then this is good. Pianissimo to mezzo piano. I think I mentioned this earlier as, as, as a good way to have the horns swell in here without extinguishing all the other elements. So swelling up to mezzo piano, but this should be mezzo forte, right? This, nobody is going to hear this. This is a beautiful, beautiful idea. It's celesta, beautiful. Harp, beautiful. But nobody can hear them because of how loud the winds and the, and the horns are. Right, so this has to be at least louder. The uh, uh, winds will always be a little bit, will always project a bit more than the strings, and the brass will always project the most of all. So the balance needs to be rethought here. These chords here in the celesta will be inaudible. So the, you might as well just leave them out, right? Uh, and just find other ways of expressing them, which you kind of already have, right, in, in other ways. Now, if these chords were marked up excuse me, if they were um, scored up an octave or two, then you could hear them. But in the position that they are now, their sound will get absorbed by the rest of the texture. This texture is not subtle enough and atmospheric enough to pull that off, all right? There could be other ways of scoring it that would, but this is not that case. Now, uh, going on past the double bar, we go back to the winds expressing the melody and you know there is a nice contrast here between English horn and clarinet just to point out though that that the contrast could go even farther between winds and strings in terms of carrying the melody right so it's not um, you have to think about how much you want to revisit the sound of the um, 
of, of winds have the wind tone. Now here, there's a lot of dynamic mixing, right? We have piano and the strings and harp and contrabassoon. And, you know, this contrabassoon note is really going to, you know, it's going to be very audible, that bum. Bassoon or even bass clarinet would probably be a lot more discreet. So I would just say everything should be piano except for the horn could be pianissimo like it is. And this could be piano espressivo uh, crescendo, right? And then, then you don't have to... It's like you're turning up the dial and down the dial and everything. It's better to have a whole passage piano and to score to the common dynamic rather than to just uh, have different elements that are added at different dynamic levels. That's just It's just easier for the whole orchestra to play together. Okay, now we're going away from uh, Sultasto. Da, 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 da. Right, so da, 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 da. I, I feel like, I, I just feel if people are going to ignore the, the fact that the, the melody is a middle voice, that the note here should be emphasized somehow, like rather with a tenuto or a light accent, right? So that we really get that da 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 coming through, even though we've got the note on top of bum, the F sharp. Okay, now this, I think this is a really neat, this is a neat concept. Um, da 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 dum, bum. It just distracted a little bit. Maybe there's a way of, maybe you could put it, maybe you could move the 16th notes forward slightly. So dun dun dun, dun rather than dun dun, dun 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 dun, might work better. Because I just felt it right here, rushing down to the middle note, kind of distracted a little bit from the emphasis of the middle of the bar. That was just my, my feeling about it. So here we have very nicely scored mezzo staccato in strings and trumpets, trombones, with the pizzicato here. Now here, you you know you're into dynamic mixing. Here's where you need to mix it. This this should be piano. The other instruments can be mezzo piano, okay? And then you know bum bum, and then diminuendo in your trumpets and your clarinets. So right here, this can be a completely untouched, beautiful, standing on its own downbeat um, in flutes and clarinets and so on, horns. And if, if this were um, piano and pianissimo horns, piano winds pianissimo horns, then you get a really nice contrast between the two parts. All right. Yeah, I mean, it's, see, this is not very delicate. You're having your violins play um, Sul G, and that is a very delicate, beautiful, expressive sound, but the horns are just sitting right on top of it, and they are just going to just smash all of the beautiful expressiveness out of these strings, unless you mark them down to pianissimo. Okay, and then we have these little elements. This is all going to work fine. I don't even know, I don't even think you need the tuba in there. I think the contrabassoon is enough. Now, bum, 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 bum. And as I mentioned before in other scores, this does not actually need to be divisi. This could be non-divisi. Uh, this could be double stops because sixths are just very very simple and this right here is a is an augmented sixth excuse me augmented fifth which is functionally a sixth under the in the in terms of the fingering pattern so it's it's all really doable for your string players and that's of course doubled by oboes clarinets and bassoons so it's just going to sound very integrated okay and then I really like <clears throat> I really like the way that this all tailed off at the end with lower uh, lower winds, strings, and brass, really really smooth. However, I felt that it was really you could really hear these notes coming in here, right? So so essentially, the horns are playing 
the same notes as like this this is um, this A sharp right in here is going to be this D sharp down here and then the D sharp right here written D sharp is going to be sounding G sharp so you're basically coming in and like supporting this right so I feel these notes should start here pianissimo right so if everybody's going to be I think that the winds can come up to piano and then the horns can just all be pianissimo right and then start here with this with these notes with these tones right here and then it you know right the way that you threw this in here right on this beat you can hear the horns come in right and I don't think you want that I think you want it to be completely smooth and 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 just blending together perfectly so that's this isn't working start this D sharp fifth written D sharp fifth back here and just have all of your brass pianissimo winds piano along with the strings and then you've got a really really nice balance there okay so wow just what a great score though I mean I, I was I'm picking apart the balance there for you because that's what you need to work on but there are other things you don't need to work on you are really getting a great sense of color and proportion and everything else so congratulations on that uh, and yeah as I mentioned before I really do hope that you will that you will enter in future uh, future challenges future orchestration challenges and you know I'm hoping with your experience and your insights you'll be able to comment on these uh, these scores as well from this group of scores and and any others that you might happen to watch so you know seriously it would really help me if you can comment on some of the other uh, some of the other entries, some of the other evaluations in this, and if you have any particular thoughts about it, just share them. You don't have to think of yourself as a big expert or anything like that, but if just something occurs to you, something that could help the other person, or even just a compliment, that is really, really, you know, that is something that's so important for this community. Um, now that's the last missing piece, right? That is the thing that completes it for me, is when people comment in each, on each other's scores, so please do. Now on to our next entry. Our next score is from Tai G, and I really enjoyed this. This has got some some just really nice colors. It's it's really great to see somebody trying out this and and you know just coming up with some really interesting ideas. Okay, now right at the beginning, the first thing I have to mention. Okay, so just starting off, and that is that the sound set. Uh, the the mock-up that was provided uh, the sound set sort of sounded like general MIDI sounds and I sort of w when I was setting up these videos which I did sort of weeks in advance I was setting up the um, the the files for these videos with um, and putting in everybody's um, like a, a an image for everybody to watch along to the provided mock-ups so I set all that up in advance, and I inadvertently did a uh, an export of the of of my own note performer sounds, which I feel sound way better than the original mockup that was provided. So Taiji, really look into note performer. That is the sound set that I used with my. Uh, with my notation app, which is Sibelius, um, which I guess we're both using Sibelius, right? So the sound sets that uh, that you provided, I mean, they sort of sounded like maybe Garatan or General MIDI. And Note Performer is really cheap. It's only, I think it's like $140 US or something like that. It's it's not that expensive. And as you can hear, the, the sounds are much more realistic. Well, I mean, realistic is a... Uh, that's uh, I use that term advisedly, but it's it's closer. It's much much closer than the um, than the the general MIDI that I got from you. All right, so I hope that you'll forgive me for that. Now, immediately though, we can hear the danger of providing a uh, a, a brass background 
when everybody's playing the same dynamic level, the same marked dynamic level. So if you want like warm, beautiful brass in the background, you really have to mark them down. So if your horns and your heavy brass were marked pianissimo, right? And then you allowed your winds to expand. If they were piano, then mezzo piano, mezzo forte in the middle here, then I think you would have a just a you have a really beautiful balance and a really nice colors here with your winds and your brass all working together. Okay, so you're saying horns in F2, horns in F2. So in other words, you have two players. You're saying clarinets, oboes, flutes. How many of each? Two flutes, one flute, three flutes, right? I mean, you, obviously it's two, it's two of each, right? Um, except for clarinets, we don't like. Here we got. Here we have two voices. So in this area, excuse me, this area right in here you could have brought in more voices for all of the instruments, right? So you could have had um, two voices from the bassoons, two voices from the clarinets. You could have really built nice chords here. All right, now you kind of do across all of the other instruments, but, but I mean, the same thing, you know, usually there are two tenor trombones plus one bass and a tuba, right? So you could have had those two. And there really isn't anything that you're doing here with trumpets that couldn't be on one staff, right? A sort of just a safe space and then I can make the uh, staff size bigger on your score to make it readable. Well it is readable, it isn't a big kind of a thing. Okay, watch out for spelling, anime, right, or animes, A-N-I-M-E-Z, right, so um, yeah, so watch out for, uh, watch out for the um, the spelling of some of this, this French uh, and uh, yeah, so so it's, I mean, it pretty much hangs together though. I mean, it's really, it's nice scoring just so long as you have the balance down, right? If you could just bring the balance down on the brass. So that's something, you know, try this out. If you, if you are interested in Note Performer, try out Note Performer and then go through your score again and redo the dynamics marking down, like in situations where you have brass and, um, and winds and strings all working together try to keep the the brass down by one harmonic degree. So here, like mark them pianissimo. Here I would say, leave the brass at pianissimo, but bring the the winds up to piano. And then of course, the mark the celesta and the harp at like, so it's, you know, even louder. It's always, you know, I'm trying to get people not to do harmonic mixing, but I do realize that harp and celesta need to be louder. But I'll talk about the, you know, how to write a good celesta and harp part. Okay, so, you know, I, I really don't have a big problem with anything else except for the fact that these slurs are really, really long, right? Also, you didn't tell us which oboe player is playing, right? Is that the first oboe player playing? In that case, you should write one period. And if you really want it to stand out, you could write one period solo, right? Then the, then the same thing here, right? Is that the first flute starting? Generally speaking, like the breath mark could last until the other voice comes in, right? So if you had a slur that lasted from here to there, let's see if I can do this without causing chaos, right? If it was if it was like that, and then, right? And then here, oops. Ah, sorry, sorry folks. So see that see that makes a whole lot more sense. And then like the oboist can play this all in one, but why not just have the slurs match a little bit? Like what if you were to you know, what if your slurring was like this? Right? So that just seems a lot more sensible to me. And then you have a little bit of overlap there, or you could even go like this, right? If you really want it to match. Anyhow, that's just one way of doing the slurs in this. You have to think that it's that the player can breathe the way all the way through, but it's a question of articulating on the downbeat, right? So whether or not they're going to tongue the note or just like not really have a, any downbeat. So you get to a point where nobody knows where the downbeat is just because all of the lines are so fluid, right? So if you hear players at rehearsal, at, at one of your rehearsals say like, who's got the downbeat here? 
you know that you don't have enough emphasis on the downbeat. The players can't hear where it is. That would be the case between these two or between these three players here. All right. Um, and the same thing is happening here. You're slurring down. Right, do you really want that? Or do you want da da? Do you want to land on this, right? With a nice tongued uh, first beat, right? Or bowed first beat. So up, down. It right? might, might work a whole lot better. And then, of course, this is really kind of impossible. You're slurring down and then tying and then slurring again. The bow, the base, the bassist bow is the shortest bow of the entire section, right? So they don't really, they can't really hold notes for super long, right? I mean, it's softer dynamics. They can hold things for a lot longer, but all the same, it just seems like quite a long distance when you really could go up, down, up, down, right? And just so just get rid of, you could just get rid of these, uh, entirely and then that is really you know that is really easy to play and much more expressive okay um and then kind of the same thing applies here in terms of bowing right da 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 so do you really want uh uh right or do you want uh 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 or do you want Da 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 or da 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 or da 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 Just really think about what you're asking in terms of the bowing. And also here, like, you know, avoid really this isn't actually all that long because the tempo is fast, but but still, you know, try to avoid kind of long things going on on the tuba. And if you were really going to have this all slurred, the slur uh should go like this. Right? If you this really was intended the way that you have marked it. It should go like this, right? So one breath covering everything. All right. Okay, so now let's talk about celesta and harp in here. So the harp is going to sound at pitch. The celesta is going to sound an octave higher, right? So here you've got octaves going on, and here you've got like notes together, right? So it, you know, the the problem here is that that you're sort of losing the higher octave as the music is progressing, right? Rather than going higher, right? Now, if you had started with, let's say, harp unison with violin, really pretty sound, da, 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 and then the celesta comes in, da, then octave higher, da, 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 da. So it's like the music is leading forward and getting bigger, right? Instead of just suddenly dropping down. I mean, doing it the other way is fine too, but yeah, this this scoring is okay, and here you have to understand once again, celesta sounds an octave higher than the notes that um, are written. So here, they're the notes for your celesta and your harp are playing, but they are playing along to mezzo forte tenuto staccato brass, right? And nobody is going to hear that, especially with trumpet playing the same pitches as the harp. There goes the harp, right? Nobody can hear it now. And then the overtones of these bright boys here, just blasting away, is going to just basically erase the celesta an octave higher, right? So if you really wanted these notes to sound, you should mark, you should uh, score them up an octave or even two octaves, right? If, if you want them to be audible or just leave them out entirely, okay? Okay, so um, unga, 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 uh, right? That's the, that's the articulation sound of the tenuto staccato. And then <clears throat> here, this is kind of nice. You are just adding, you're sort of stacking more winds on top of this, but soft, right? So really it would be better, as I mentioned before, for the winds to be piano and for the brass to be pianissimo. And then you'll get a balance, right? Especially since you are asking the trumpet player to play in unison with the oboe player, right? Now, you could really, you could, okay, keep that. Pianissimo, brass, piano winds, and then score the winds the next octave up, right? So uh, you can leave the bassoon where it is, but basically just have the kind of chordal pattern go an octave higher and be in flutes and oboes or flutes and clarinets or something like that okay and then the then the bra excuse me then the winds will shine through just beautifully right and then you can add some uh, some harp and celesta to that way up high 
uh, covering some of those notes and you'll get a beautiful crisp sound. Okay, so that, that w might be a better way of scoring that out. But I mean, it's not to say that it's, it's like the beginnings of a good idea, but it needs a little bit of work on it in order to make it really shine. Okay, and then we've got da 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 da. Now here's like I've been complaining about slurs, but here's where I feel you do need some slurs. So you know da 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 is a nice way to do it, or da 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 would be another cool way of doing it. I wouldn't put a slur over everything, but just you know enough to. And rather than just bum 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 bum, it just really kind of feels like a finger shaking at me. <laughs> uh, the other thing too is that um, we're really submerging the strings below, you know, inside the winds, rather than um, rather than having a string texture be a strong part of it, right? So like all the the harmony, the three parts of harmony that sit above these strings the um, the sixths that are walking down in the flutes and the uh, upper voice of the oboes, those are going to pretty much absorb the resonance, the sheen of the of the first violins, okay and and the and the overtones from the rest of the strings. So you'll feel strings in there. The strings will make the center smooth, but they won't really necessarily add to the radiance, right? So if you wanted a kind of a silky sound, you could try what somebody else tried before, and that was just simply to to you know have a scoring uh, a scoring strategy like this, but have the first violins and octaves, that works fine, um, or to have all of the strings in octaves, but leave the harmonic context to the uh, strings, excuse me, to the winds, and then add a little bit of horn. So I mean, there's a bunch of different ways of doing this, but. Um, but yeah, and then here the harp is just way too low to be audible. So if the harp were playing octaves here or some other kind of thing where you know it was maybe covering the top line or was playing even chords above, then you would hear the harp coming through very nicely. But this won't be heard at all. Okay, and you know nice little touches, um, triangle, bass drum. I, I feel this is too strong right in here. You already have your timpani, right? Um, maybe better to not have timpani and bass drum playing together at the same time, but maybe have the bass drum there where you want emphasis, like just rhythmic emphasis, and the timpani where you want functional emphasis, right? Plus rhythmic emphasis, like where you really want to hear that 5-1, right? Bum 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 bum. Uh, and here, like you really are not coming back to the one, right? So here you should just cut the timpani, right? I mean, B is not the root of this chord. All right, so if you just cut the timpani here and then added your bass drum here, it would be probably a better strategy. <clears throat> here, anybody's guess, like it's, it's totally up to you, but I wouldn't say do both. Anyhow, just really, really fun score and, and, um, and I, I feel it brought out a lot it was really great to look at this because it brought out a lot in me too as the coach, <laughs> right? So thank you so much for sharing this with me and please, you know, have a look at the other scores and if there's anything that you have to say about them in terms of like, you know, compliments or insights or, or even just asking people how they got a certain effect or, or, you know, or that's, it's all great, you know, so everybody comment on everybody else's scores. Now I'm going to go on to the next entry for this group. Our next entry is from Pierre, and it really is delicate, as mentioned right here, delicato. I really love the the care <laughs> that is being provided here. Really, just you know, being being careful and and being you know being nuanced and so on. So we'll talk a little bit about a few. Um, 
a few things. Now, notationally, this uh, there, there's the uh, curved line used for glissando sometimes. I think a straight line is fine. Just a you know straight line with a glissando, and then after you've said it once, glissando, straight line, then just, just use the straight line from there on. I think that's just a lot clearer and, and kind of takes up a, takes up less space in the brain. <laughs> now, I've, I've mentioned this before, Pierre, about not using the up roll. Don't, no, don't use the arrow up roll, uh, the line with the arrow pointing upwards, because a roll is just a roll, right? Just use the standard wavy line with no arrow on it when that's all you mean, right? Because the up arrow is really reserved for when you also have a down arrow involved, right? When you give the up arrow to a harpist or a pianist like me, I will start looking around at the score. Is there a down arrow somewhere that I missed? Right, so down, up, down, up, and so on. But since all rolls, you know, 99% of all rolls are up, are, excuse me, are intended to roll upwards anyways, just use the standard roll mark, okay? And just kind of spare the confusion. Things are a little strange right in here, like, sort of like this is, you know, I'm, I'm really not sure about the, you know, this is supposed to be uh, first voice, so second voice, I suppose, is like, I can't really tell whether or not this is one, two, three, or, you know, where this comes in, but if this was intended to be part of this, this should be all one this should be all one chord, right? A G, C, and a D all together. Now, here we've got a kind of a strange thing. Bartok pizzicato indicated for harp. That is something that I am not familiar with, and I've seen a lot of uh, different... <laughs> okay, the problem is that the, the, the effect of the Bartok pizzicato is that the string snaps against the uh, the the soundboard, but there's no way to do that with harp. But I guess you could pluck by pulling away. But I think you get like a really big twang, right? Which is the opposite of like a soft effect that you want here, a sort of quiet effect. So I mean, if I missed a salzado technique, I I, I know most of the salzado techniques. Um, if I've missed one, uh, then I have to look this up. Maybe I'm forgetting, but yeah. Um, I would say even even at that, even if this is a standard Salzado technique, you should mention what it is. Like he has, you know, like flux, like Aeolian flux and, you know, tympanic sounds and so on. You should just mention it, like say, say Salzado technique, blah, 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 above it, okay? But if, you know, if you just meant it to be plucked or if you meant it to be harmonics, right? Harmonics would be a circle without the line in it, right? So harmonics would be so. Let's just assume this is harmonics. I'll give you in. I'll give you feedback as if this were harmonics. Here we've got a uh, a harp pedal diagram, which seems to have jumped up from the harp part into the just into the main part of the of the uh, um, you know the what they would call system text in Sibelius. Um, as far as everything else is concerned, symbols should not have, there should not be a, um, um, a sharp mark. There should not be a key signature mark for a, uh, for a percussion line. And in fact, there, there was no symbol part at all. So you could have just deleted that symbol part and then that would have saved space, vertical space, and you could have made your uh, staff size slightly larger. Okay, so now let's talk about the scoring, okay? And any other issues I will discuss as we go. So we're starting off um, beautiful little uh, uh, glissando upwards, little ding from the celesta. This celesta scoring is very, very cute. Um, here I think you can just say piano espressivo and then one solo over the top. Now here you're, you're not telling us which one. It's like, okay, don't say flutes a due, right? Or a two or whatever. Just say two flutes, right? Two flutes, two B-flat clarinets, two oboes, two bassoons. 
or you can do this like you know how they, like there's like a one comma two whatever you can say you know flutes flutes one and two clarinets one and two uh, but don't say ah three right because like that gives the that makes the conductor think that all of these lines are supposed to be played with three players right so maybe that is what you meant but that's that's not a that's not a thing all right that's not a, a good way of scoring it okay just say two flutes and then tell us which flute is being used however looking at this like there's only one place where you actually used more than one voice at a time in your winds and brass and that's right here right everything else is just one voice at a time so <clears throat> this could have just been one of each as far as the balance is concerned because it seems to me that that's what you're asking right so um but let's let's stay focused on the actual scoring so you've got your melody ba da da dum just imagine piano crescendo and then diminuendo da 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 dum right <coughs> and then instead of like uh instead of crescendo to mezzo forte and back just crescendo take out the mezzo forte and just yeah you know and just just make it subtle rather than just really swelling outwards right because when you swell outwards to mezzo forte like that you put a lot of pressure on the other parts they can't be delicate anymore same thing here you're trilling from piano to forte <clears throat> maybe it just needs to go you know with just don't make a destination dynamic here and just let the players increase a little bit and then decrease right and then the players the sorry the uh the people playing the melody can uh contribute to the right extent here you've got sort of a mistake here the oboes go above the clarinets clarinets go below the oboes otherwise things are you know pretty much in their in their right place Usually, the horns are one and two, and then three and four, right? Um, and then the the first and second player work together as a team on a lot of just you know playing intervals, playing two parts, and so on and so forth. It doesn't always go to the third player to play the high notes. Okay, but just back to the scoring: clarinets, flutes, and octaves, and then the strings come in and. One thing I noticed about this whole section right in here, there's very little harmony, you know, like there's very little functional harmony. I mean, it does come in a little bit here at the end, but it really just seems to be about the bass and about the melody right in here. And I feel that that's something, you know, you've got these horns, they're not doing anything. You've got four horns that could be playing harmony right in here and filling this in a little bit more. Okay. Um yeah i mean this this is all going to work but it's really strange that you have the second violins playing the higher part and the first violins playing the lower part it really should be reversed because the seconds are looking to the firsts for leadership right the the purpose of the first violins is to lead the second violins and the rest of the orchestra here you're you know like the seconds are just be playing on top of the firsts and and you know, I'm sure they'll. I'm sure they will be fine, but it's it's just less psychologically effective, and it's and it, it just kind of works against the way the string section works. So just really reverse them, okay? Now the the second violinists don't mind playing an octave under the violinist. They're used to doing that. That's their job, okay? Now right in here, as the music starts to surge, you go up to fortissimo. Nobody's going to hear the harp right in here. It's going to be invisible, right? And here fortissimo in your strings and your piccolo the celesta will also disappear right the celesta is really good for softer dynamics right so if you have a lot of instruments playing at once if you had done a crescendo up to maybe mezzo forte or mezzo piano and the celesta was playing octaves up here or something then you could sort of hear the celesta Right, but the way that it's scored now, it's just very difficult to hear. Okay, and then I love this little um, this little glissando downwards. That's very nice. Uh, continuing on, very cool to have this as a horn solo. Bum, 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 bum. Do you really want a staccato and then a long slur? Duh. I mean, it just it doesn't make any sense. Duh. Uh. Maybe that's a mistake. I don't know. But don't, you know really think about what you're doing with your slurs like here 
Like, there's no way for a player to slur all of these under one bowing, right? We, we don't use phrase markings in strings and winds. We use, the slur is used to show how, how long the bow is playing in one direction, right? So, so you know, it, here you're saying, okay, just the bow is going to start going across the string and it's just going to keep going and keep going and keep going. So you're robbing this line of any kind of w place where the notes could dig in, right? Da 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 da. All right, you know, it's like there's just nothing that right, right. The way that you've got it scored, it's da e wa. It just sounds, sort of sounds like you know somebody doing jazz scat, right? So you just really have to. Um, you have to think about using slurs and then the beginnings of phrases for emphasis, okay? Don't just put a big old slur over the top. That's not how it works. And don't start a slur with a staccato. All right. And then trombones, bassoons, that's can, that can be a nice mixture at times. Just make sure that the trombones are softer than the bassoons, right? So this should be piano, that should be pianissimo. Okay, and then we got a little bit of Pizzicato here, I think this is intended to be harmonics, that's fine. Um, and, you know, good markings there like pianissimo versus piano, you'll sort of hear the harmonics. Okay, and this can just be piano, solo, you know, first player solo, right? That's all you need right there. And here you can just, you know, get rid of the slur and go da 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 da, or just add a slur here and a slur there. Da da da. All right, da 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 da, and then we have this little little trill going right up here. Now, be careful about going up to somewhere. You know, you're going and then here you're going and then here you're going and then you're going you know, you're really going up a lot, right? So you have to think about, oh, it just feels so inspired. I'm reaching upwards. Right, but then how many times can you do that before people say, "Yeah, he's doing that again"? Right, so be careful. Don't just throw these little effects away. Right, just use them right where they are the most effective. Right, they're effective effects, and then otherwise, just say, "Okay, well, I'll you know." Something strange about your notation software is that the notes don't line up. It's kind of strange. They kind of do, and they kind of don't. I'm not sure which notation app you were using, but this needs a little bit of work. This is fine, this big hit, boom, right? It would have been kind of nice if there was kind of more harmony in here. That would have been great. And then, dun, dun, do you really want this to go dun, or do you want to go dun, 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 it's forte, right? Um, and then here you're going uh, clarinet, boom, or do you want to go da 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 da, or even staccato da 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 da? But I mean, I like the whole idea of teaming up the clarinet with the horn. That's kind of fun. Okay, so uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot more I could go into just about certain basic um, scoring things and some scores for you to study and so on and so forth. But I think you know, I think you can see some of the other concepts that are being used by other orchestrators and and sort of maybe get an idea of a little bit more well-rounded orchestration. But look, this is a really good effort. You know, if you are a student orchestrator, if you are a, you know, you're a developing orchestrator and you're just starting to take a crack at some of these challenges, I think this is really great. But um, I would really recommend, I think that you could go forward with leaps and bounds with a good teacher uh, and you know you could be just right up there near the top of the pack. You've got such great ideas, you've got a really excellent musical sense, just need some more experience score reading and, um, and you know maybe working with a teacher or a coach on a regular basis and setting some goals because you know you really do have a great ear and you've got a lot of talent so um, so really stick with it and please do comment on some of the other scores if you've got something nice to say or if you've got a perspective about it would be really useful for the other entries. All right, so speaking of which, on to our next entry.
Another beautifully imaginative score, this time from Yon, and just really, I just really enjoyed this so much. Okay, so there are a few things to talk about. As, as I was mentioning before in, in the previous score, really like the longer that you have a slur over a wind line, the less emphasized parts of the phrase you can have, right? So there's no place for the player to tongue a note. Now, it's not to say that this is wrong or anything, like Ravel, for instance, would have these really long uh, lines in flute, oboe, and clarinet, and so on. But just, you know, I kind of feel like I'm starting to lose the sense of, of emphasis on certain parts of the melody, right? The, um, the strings are all slurred really, really nicely in terms, you know, like for bowing and so on and so forth. Um, and then of course, you know, da, da, that's all fine. So yeah, so let's talk about the scoring. I, I really don't have any, um, any issues with, um, with any of the notation. You know, obviously you're an experienced composer, you've got, you know, you've got some notation chops and some, and you've obviously composed and orchestrated things before uh, and done pretty well at it. So we'll just talk about the effectiveness of the scoring as it is here, right? So there, there's a nice sense here of restraint uh, of the horns, like kind of trying to stay in the background. I think that you can bring the strings up though, right? You can go from piano to mezzo forte and then back down to piano and then pianissimo to mezzo piano and then down back down to pianissimo. So I think that the clarinets and especially the flute here, um, you know, they, they can be up a dynamic degree. Here I feel that the, uh, the surge should match. Maybe you just forgot to put the hairpins, you know, the diminuendo hairpins here on this fourth bar in flute and clarinet. It's a very prominent flute sound, I've got to say, in, in your mock-up. Uh, almost maybe a little too present, do you know what I mean? It's more of a solo sound that I'm hearing from your mock-up rather than, a, than kind of a, a section sound, That's an orchestral section sound. So, like the, the... Other than like some of these points, like about just a super long piano type phrasing over the clarinet, kind of taking away emphasis from certain notes. Uh, I, I feel that it's it's very nicely, very competently scored. Uh, probably don't need this slur right in here. Um, you know, it's probably better just to just to slur between these two and then start again here, right? Just because otherwise, really what you would need is a slur over all four of these bars, right? Rather than just going back and forth from note to note. But just in general, you know, we have our scoring approach here of uh, middle strings. I don't think you need to go Devizi here just to have like half the desks playing along with the flute. I, I know you don't want to bury your flute or anything like that, but the flute will come through if everybody is very soft. So it's okay to have your already soft violas all playing along with the flute. I think it will come through fine. And then clarinets plus cellos, that's all gonna work fine. Then the harp here, I don't think you need to say pianissimo, piano, pianissimo. I don't think you need to do that. I think all you need to do is just mark mezzo piano and then have it go all the way through, and then it will balance with the rest of the uh, with the rest of the music. Okay, and then I've already, as I've already said, I think all of the elements here should be piano to crescendo, crescendoing to mezzo forte, and then the horns in the background. This is nice. This nice roll right in here. You could also keep that in the background. All right, so we get to this point. Da, da, 
da, and then they're then F sharp. You throw in this little harp thing. You could actually go even an octave higher. You could actually have had. Um, you could go all the way up to F sharp an octave higher and just put a, or just put an ottava mark here with octaves underneath it. And then you would have gotten the completion of the phrase, right? Although all the, going all the way up. Uh, yeah, so so you know, the only critique that I would have here, and you know, I'm, I'm trying not to be tough on you or anything like that, though I, I'm, I'm sure that you wouldn't take it the wrong way. But yeah, I mean, there's like a, there's a downbeat pulse here, right? <clears throat> but I feel that there isn't any um, menuet-like pulse here in this beginning. You know, there's, there's a sort of a minuet underneath the music. Da 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 da. Right there's a there is something pushing into the downbeat, right? And since we have this big slur just sitting over all the clarinet part, there isn't any of that that momentum into the downbeat. It's sort of lacking now, or sort of sort of just. And in fact, it, if all of these players are playing very uh, legato and very subtly then you really won't hear the stress on the downbeat either that much. And we're only going up to mezzo piano, so there really isn't any firmness on the downbeat. There aren't any strokes, really. There's a little bit of timpani in here, but there isn't really any push, right? So that would be my critique to you, you know, from one orchestrator to another. It's just like in terms of the, you know, I'm not just not feeling that as much. Now, going on, it's plenty. It's very nice. And I really love the way you reimagine this, you know. Da, da, dee, da, da. you know just like this I love the just like the reimagining of it and it the you know the way da 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 you know it, it, like the way that it all kind of is separated out throughout the parts that's such a great idea and then of course like adding these little touches I don't think you need a two bassoons plus a two flutes all on the same note right I think it's probably better just one bassoon added to the A2 flutes and then the, I would say, flutes at mezzo piano and then bassoons at piano. Okay, and probably that probably won't sound right on the sound sets that you're using. It'll make the flutes too loud, but that's probably what would work, what end up, would end up working in real life. Uh, this is cool, bum bum. Um, yeah, the harp, that's all, all working together, that's fine. Uh, slurring across though into the downbeat like right here i think you need really need emphasis rather than uh, uh, sorry it's just too low for me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know i, I kind of feel da, da. i feel like the something needs to bow right here right rather than slurring into it because you have these other elements you have the timpani is doing a stroke here right they're they're, they're they're hitting something, there is going to be a punch there. You slur over that punch and you rob some of the the feeling of pulse on that note. Okay, and then this is all good. This is all just really fun, just a development of that idea. Uh, and I really love this. Da, 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 the way it's separated across the two parts. You know, and then you give. Ta-da! Here's our F sharp as a separate harmony now given to the flutes. Yay! I really, really approve, Jon. That's nice. <laughs> and now, bum, 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 bum. Okay, all right, so do you really want dun, 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 da? Right? Because that's what we're getting here. We're not getting dun, 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 da. Right? We're getting dun, 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 dun. So accented staccato. Uh, of course, some elements do go on with in terms of tremolo and then, of course, our... Uh, muted horns. So, I mean, I, as far as that goes, that did work for me. It's it's fine. Just want to make sure. So, um, yeah, just that really snarly, nasty sound on the background, but added, you know, when you add the strings to it. Um, here you're putting the horns in front of the tremolo texture. Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, it's okay, but it'll tend to really cancel out a lot of what the strings are doing, and you can even hear it in the mock-up too. Is that it's just really not coming through, and of course, that the, the harp is just going to be thrown away as soon as these horns are playing forte in front of them. That you just really won't hear the harp unless it's mixed. Okay, so all the winds plus tremolo strings, and then we have our little soft answer. 
right? Did you consider, have, uh, maybe you haven't seen some of the other evaluations yet, but <clears throat> did you consider that possibly the loud sound of these snarly uh, horns might uh, cast a shadow over the downbeat coming up, the sort of resonance, the, re the reverb of the hall might obscure the delicacy of the downbeat of the next bar. Right, so that's something I've been saying in a lot of these. That has been a problem with a lot of these uh, arrangements as I've seen them. So that's something I would point out to you, sir, as a as a you know somebody who's really obviously uh, you know got good orchestration chops, and you are you, know, you are aiming for a more craft, very careful type of orchestration approach. Please think about that. All right. So without arpeggiating. That's all good. Uh, this should actually go right here in the middle rather than above, right? Um, I know it's technically it is technique text, but it usually you read it uh, after the <clears throat> after the dynamic. So uh, you know, non ARP is just is just the fastest way. Uh, and then we have like just our more delicate tremolo with uh, staccato flutes, oboes, and bassoons. That all works good. You know, just. It's not a variation, it's just a real extreme reduction of what happened before, right? Uh, and then here I would say pianissimo, not piano. Okay, and now, bum, 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 bum. And here's an extremely well integrated <laughs> uh, take on how to, how to score this. So just notice this. So we've seen a bunch of different interpretations and I think there's been one or two that has been like this, but I did not point it out especially, but we've been, I've been talking about it a lot. So just noticing that we've got, you know, six parts of harmony spread out across, you know, or two, two three part harmony chords spread out across the strings here. And then, and then of course, like the uh, cello is taking the bottom line. And then that is, you know, the cellos are being doubled by tuba here, and uh, and all of these other elements are doubling across. You know, it's kind of interesting. We've got these octave oboes, and then the uh, A clarinet is playing down a third from there. So, like, all of the positions are being um, are being filled in as we go down. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's just really fun. Horns plus tuba. I really love that combination in terms, you know, if you just really are limiting. Um, I My harp concerto originally had a, um, had bass trombone plus four horns. And that was so we could include uh, a gentleman who has become a friend of mine, Kareem. And I just really enjoyed his playing on that. But I probably will go back and put in like, tuba or euphonium or something like just to have a more horn-like matching sound in the future if, if we do have another performance of it. But yeah, but I love tuba plus horns. It's a really great sound. Okay, and then we've got this suspended symbol. Now you do not have to mark uh, X heads, right? Because it's just a, if we know it's suspended symbol, just have a regular note head. You know, it's there's really kind of no need to have this X in there. There's, you know, it's just what it is. Uh, and then just touches a bass drum right in here. Uh, I think you can just have single quarter note values, right? I think that that works better for bass drum rather than letting the head vibrate, which is gonna, you know, interfere. Okay, bum, 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 bum. And then we have this beautiful resolution chord here, which covers so I mean it's it's much thicker scoring than I would do but I respect it because it's done right right so this is this would be one way of how to do it right so all right so um, I am spending way more on each score than I plan to it's about 13 to 15 minutes on each score but anyhow I, I'm really enjoying it this is just really great I just feel supercharged today so um, so thank you so much for your score, Yon. And like, obviously, <laughs> you have some great ideas about scoring. And, you know, if I, I would really love to see you share some of your insights, some of your perspectives with some of the other orchestrators in this group. Uh, you know, any helpful comments that you can make, any compliments, 
any um, any sort of insights of like if they did something that you tried out and you you know and you would have wanted to do it that way but you had another idea about doing it that's also fair game to share so you know please do let us know what you think of the other uh, of the other entries to this particular collection in a, in a in a nice way <laughs> and uh, thank you so much for entering the score and I hope to see you in future challenges because I'm just really interested by your approach here and you know I just feel like you have really got some chops here it's really great to see it now on to our final score for this collection of a half dozen entries Right, Nicholas. Hey, it, it is great to have an entry from you for this challenge. And actually, you've been a little bit um, out of the community for a while, and it's really great to see you back. You know, commenting on other scores. And I mean, I, I don't need to say, hey, Nicholas, could you comment on this score or that score? Because you've already been doing that. And you are unusually generous with your comments on people's scores just in general. And your, your advice, you know, is, is, is helpful and is appreciated by people. And, and I think that that is fantastic. Okay, so, um, so, so thank you so much for this entry. Thanks for, um, for being in the community and doing what you do. It's all really really much appreciated and you really turned in a great entry here um there's uh you may have posted your entry um in the group or or as a video of its own so so people may already know that you have you, that you scored out the entire uh, uh the entire piece rather than just the the sort of website evaluation limit okay um, well and good. I'm, I'm going to limit myself to this, but just to mention to people that Nicholas went on and, and scored more and he had like some really great ideas. All right. Now, so as far as this is concerned, um, I feel like there are some things that don't really translate very well uh, with the uh, with the mock-up. Like, for instance, these uh, glissandos right in here, they, they kind of seem a little crude, you know what I mean? And, and I think that that probably Nicholas intended them to be more subtle, right? Maybe not, not quite so obvious, especially right in here. Um, and there are one or two missing dynamics, like for instance, right here, Nicholas, you forgot to tell us uh, how many, you know, excuse me, um, how loud the music is right in here, which of course like needs to be a little bit stronger um, than the rest of it, say, you know, piano crescendo, right? Uh, but yeah, but but really nicely phrased. You're really thinking of a lot of things. About about the only thing I would comment here in terms of the slurring is just, um, you know, I mean, I mean, so far it's fine. It's just I feel that that it's taking away from the emphasis of the downbeat here when you slur across the bar like that. Da da, right da. Uh, and you know we, we also lose that da 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 right that just that kind of a slight yearning feeling there kind of gets thrown away when we slur across it um, you know but other than that I really just have no comments to make about like slurring phrasing whatever it just was done really nicely okay so let's talk you know comments about the scoring here it's you know not a matter of me critiquing and saying oh you could have done that better it's really more just like pointing out things that are really nicely done like i really love the um these low harmonics now just to point out you start to get a little bit below the staff i mean this is just right on the uh right on the edge of what's possible in terms of harmonics like uh, G 
is as low as I would ever go. In, and in fact, I would kind of avoid anything below C in the staff. But, you know, not to say it's impossible, it's just harder and harder to get that note to speak in terms of a harmonic. So these will kind of sound, I mean, if you want an effective, like just writing in an F sharp and a G flat and so on and so forth, going in between those two, um, it's probably more effective just to write the note and to play the note rather than to have the harmonic, right? Just like in terms of how much delicate, how delicately will that come through? And if you really want it to be something that is featured, I would say mark it up to mezzo piano, right? And then like it'll it'll be much more um, audible. All right, and then just very simple, uh, you know, simple harmony in the clarinets, and then we've got uh, all of these strings uh, turning to tremolo, increasing to how much should they increase? All right, and then here. Um, at this new section, we don't get a new dynamic, right? So, like the, you know, it, it's really hard to hear the melody here in the mock-up. In fact, right? I mean, shouldn't this be like more like, are we going to stay with pianissimo minus, right? So we just have to see. You know, I just, I just feel it needs to be clearer about what the dynamics are here, especially concerning that it's kind of a new section of music with the way that you have um, marked a new tempo. Uh, and in fact, it really would have helped to have, um, you know, a cello rondo than ritardando here, as Lily asked for. It would really help the music that you've scored, right? It just would, you know, we could really hear the meaning in the way that you have scored this all together. Uh, but, you know, but notice the the um, pushing into the next bar. Da, 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 da. You know, it just really, it, um, you know, gives that emphasis going into the next, into the next bar. Uh, and, you know, but everything else I really do not have a problem with. Um, I think that this really does test the, you know, what is possible on note performer. Just, it's really not, you know, this is the kind of scoring that doesn't really necessarily work the, the best with a, with a sound set anyways, but it will sound fantastic with a real orchestra. Okay, so, so we've got our, um, you know, our basically transcription of the original piano part. And interesting that you've shifted these, you know, you've changed around these functions a little bit just for fun, um, you know. Um, and a little bit of, you know, you're, you're asking the double basses to play like a, an E two octaves up. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that's kind of fun. I'm not, not so sure that that really <clears throat> is a whole lot different from just playing the E up here softly on the on the double bass because there isn't anything really featured here in this um in this scoring that um you know that really kind of lends itself to that sound um a little confused here that there are some like there's some reverse dynamics right you've got diminuendos like the previous part but then you've got crescendos right um in the upper string so not sure how well that works all right, now here um, uh, we got some nice uh, just tenuto stuff, bum, 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 and it's just really it it really um, is a very forceful sound. I don't think the cellist is going to come through very well here at all, right? The glissando, like, what if the cellista note hit right here on the third beat? <coughs> staying way up high, right? Um, but just the way that it is, I feel that the overtones from the horns and the uh, these middle winds are basically just going to kind of clear out that region of, uh, of audible space, right? So there might be like a little ting in the background. But, but yeah, I mean, I wouldn't recommend scoring piano celesta against mezzo forte brass you know, or horns and winds anyway, right? Um, yeah, you, you know, okay, so, so one thing I just say philosophically, I'm going to differ with you here, Nicholas, and that is um, if we look at the original piano score, uh, Lily goes dun, 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 and then she echoes softly, dun, 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 and then she comes back mezzo forte, bum, 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 bum. 
Okay, and the, the problem here by just leaving it mezzo forte and kind of leaving it the same way twice and then just continuing on is that the emotional impact I feel is kind of robbed here by not having the contrasting soft bars in between, right? Um, so, so you know, so it's just kind of bright and jumpy. Dun, 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 dun. Oh yeah, and then she's just kind of an echo of the same. And then suddenly we hear this just kind of passion, right? Um, which, which to her audience, you know, these kind of strange chords, like these tritones and all these other kinds of things in the chords, um, would have just felt a little bit from left field but then resolving, right? Then she gives her audience a little bit of an ah, right? So, yeah, so I'm just gonna, I just feel maybe different articulations, different dynamics, and just some sort of contrast in here, rather than just repeating, right? Might be a way to make this passage more effective right in here. And I would also say that just really, you should have the same articulation across the board, right? So if, if, the, if the bassoons and horns are being played in a tenuto style. The same should happen for the oboes and clarinets so that they don't get like swamped, right? They don't get uh, belly whacked from the, the, the big pressure from below, all right? Um, and then um, this, this is beautiful right in here, this scoring, it's just really lovely, so yeah. Um, it would have been nice to have a little bit of string carry over into the resolution but anyways look I mean great score you know I just just really fun and and you know go like Nicholas if you have um, you know if um, if you shared the entire thing you know feel free to link that under this when I post it on Facebook or um, or to uh, to like link it in the in the YouTube comments below it's all good so everybody can have a look at listen to that so you know so so really nice great to have you back um, great to have another score for you and from you in these challenges and I think you really enjoy the next one a lot so uh, so thanks to all six of the participants for this particular group and um, yeah I've got a I'm sort of realizing now I kind of hoped to be able to do three of these videos in a row rather than just the two I've done so far but I can tell that if I do that I mean I've got the time I've got the energy but I don't think I've got the voice to do that and then do a big interview tomorrow but I'll share that interview with you guys it might be interesting to the community anyhow um, really enjoyed this this is so much fun uh, and I, I just can't get enough of it well I mean uh, check in with me after I've uh, reviewed all 146 videos or all 100 excuse me 146 uh, scores won't be 146 videos it'll be um, let's see 15 plus yeah it'll be more like 70 videos altogether but still great still really enjoying it so thanks everybody and I will see you in a couple of days I'm probably going to go back and review or evaluate some patreon scores and then come back to the website ones over the weekend. See you soon.